Ooh, welcome to the Clear Ground Show. I'm your host, Dr. G, with a PhD. Before we get started, remember guys, tell your friends about this show and please like and subscribe on this episode. It really helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you like the thumbnail art, you can check it out on a much higher resolution on Instagram. And remember, leave any questions you might have throughout the week. And on the last episode of the week, I will be answering the questions in a mailbag. All right, guys, we have a huge episode for you today. So first of all, we're going to break down a bunch of different Canada things because I think that's a really important movement and we need to assess it. Uh, So we're going to start off with Canada. We'll talk about truckers on the border. We'll break down a little segment on Morning Joe between Mika Brzezinski and Joe on how they really just don't understand the truckers or don't want to understand the truckers. We'll also shine a light on Justin Trudeau's Jekyll and Hyde transformation from everybody should have autonomy with their bodies to the unvaccinated are misogynists and sexist. The NHS in England ends the jab mandate for their healthcare providers. The FDA approves the Moderna vaccine. CNN cannot understand Joe Rogan, and that's a huge problem, and we need to defend him. And finally, John Hopkins just released a, a meta study on lockdowns. Were they effective? We'll find out. We've got all that and much, much more, so let's dive on in. So we're going to start the show off today with some more updates on Canada, and we talked a lot about Canada last time, but there's just so much more to describe and discuss, and there's a lot of things happening there. And what's crazy is a lot of the mainstream media just don't want you to know what's going on. So here's a quick update of the Canadian-USA border, and what you'll see in this video as I'm talking is just a line, as far as the eye can see, of semi-trucks and just big rigs in a blockade. And they are going to, their plan is to remain there until Canada lifts the mandate on vaccines for these truckers, which, by the way, I think something like 80% of them are already vaccinated. So this is this is a, a principle stand. It's not because they don't want the vaccine. They want people to choose whether or not to get the vaccine. They don't want the forced action of getting the vaccine to live your normal life. But again, either the mainstream media doesn't know or doesn't get it. Uh, either case is unacceptable for an organization that supposed to peddle news, but let's hear Mika Brzezinski talk about this trucker cult that's happening right now. The capital of Canada to a standstill. Dozens of trucks and other vehicles could be seen blocking the downtown area of Ottawa as protesters rallied against vaccine mandates, masks, and lockdowns. Mm, That seems uh, like an interesting way to spend your weekend. (laughs) The demonstrations were initially aimed at pushback against vaccine mandates for truck drivers crossing the U.S.-Canada border. But the movement escalated into an expression of disapproval with the Canadian government's COVID-19 policies. Officials say several investigations are underway into reports of severe vandalism and criminal behavior, including the desecration of national monuments. Mm. Meanwhile, Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson said some protesters harassed a soup kitchen, demanding free meals because their refusal to wear masks meant they were not uh, to order in restaurants. That soup kitchen tweeted COVID protesters were given meals to defuse the conflict and that this weekend's events have caused significant strain on our operations at an already Difficult. So, uh, so these anti-vaxxers actually took food from the mouths of uh, the homeless. I'm r- hungry, yeah. Because they were, they're, they're, they're so put upon. Because yeah. they have a vac- I'm just curious, again, where were these protests when people were required to take get five vaccines to start school? Where were these protests when people were required to give their children five vaccines? They were in the doctor's office getting they vaccines. Started. They were in the doctor's office getting vaccines. And they were making fun of left-wingers on the West Coast for being loopy anti-vaxxers. Okay. Now they have met the enemy, and the enemy, their enemy, is themselves, because yes. they've become what they hated. They've become what they mocked, and now they're taking food from soup kitchens because they're so put upon for being asked to do what they've been asked to do, required to do, their entire lives. Coming it's up. It's a... Cult. <laughs> yes, it is a historic moment in the. They are a cult. Yeah, a cult that wants people to be able to look at medicine and look at decisions scientifically and be able to come to their own conclusions and then decide what's best for them. I guess that's a cult. I, I don't really understand the insult there for what they're doing. But there's so many other pretty interesting things about this breakdown on the truckers from MSNBC. 
To Joe's first point, it is an interesting way to spend a weekend. As a matter of fact, they're spending a weekend defending the ability for people to choose whether or not to get this vaccine. I think that's one of the most important things you can do right now in terms of medicine and choice in the world. It's just, it's breaking. So yeah, I guess it's something you would do on a weekend that's important. Thanks for the insight, Joe. So about 40 seconds in, they start talking about national monument desecration in Canada. Funny how they only seem to have a problem with that in Canada. We've been having national monuments be desecrated all over the place the last couple of years here, and it's been nothing. It's been nothing. This is so political. And of course, by the 48th second, they've thrown up a Reuters uh, article, and the headline of that Reuters article talks about a Canada rally against vaccine mandates that blocks Ottawa as Trump praises the protest. I don't know if there's a time when MSNBC can't mention Trump. He's not been president for a whole year now. Um, again, this just goes to the politics of this particular tirade. As for the soup kitchen allegation, I looked into it and I found the same tweets that they posted. There wasn't much more besides that uh, on the soup kitchen. And that was one of the few isolated incidents of the over 50,000 truckers and thousands upon thousands of other people that came to support them that happened. Now, just because there were very few incidents doesn't mean those incidents weren't bad. And people that do bad things need to be held accountable as individuals that do bad things. That being said, remember the Freedom Convoy raised nearly 10 million Canadian dollars to support for, to get support for food and housing and other things for this venture. And here's a look at their GoFundMe. But if it was the case that these, that these certain truckers did do this thing to the soup kitchen, then MSNBC is correct. These particular guys were in the wrong. And finally, where were these protests with people who... Uh, who were trying to get their kids in school with getting five vaccines in the doctor's. That point, I go over almost every episode because a different person is making that point, and it's the same response every time. You can't compare these these approved vaccines uh, for children that have been around for decades and decades and decades, and we have a lot of literature, to the new mRNA vaccines. The comparison cannot be made in good faith because we just don't know that much about the mRNA vaccines. I don't know how many different times I have to make this point, but apparently it's going to be a lot more times because these guys don't seem to get it. And last point before going to Trudeau, what's the deal? What's the deal with MSNBC and CNN not giving these truckers a voice? Why can't they actually sympathize with the position and give it an at least steel man it and say, okay, what are these guys fighting for? What are these guys actually saying? Instead of doing any of that, they just throw this anti-vax statement out there, make them seem like the total idiots and rubes and then they're just going to shut him down. That's exactly what Justin Trudeau tried to do, and look where he is right now. The best way to move forward is to honestly assess your opponent in debate and give them the benefit of the doubt that they're doing what's what's best in their head and you're doing what's best in your head. That way, when you guys come to a, a disagreement, you're just actually trying to solve the problem instead of just throwing the other, throw the other person away. It's totally despicable. They know what they're doing, and by they, I mean MSNBC, and this has really got to stop for us to progress. Now, how can we forget about Trudeau? He came out with a statement uh, January 31st yesterday saying, hey guys, I caught COVID, so I'm going to be isolating for a while. Wow, the timing there is not weird at all. Totally, what, what are the odds that COVID just came on by, knocked on Trudeau's door, and said, hey, I'm here on January 31st as these truckers are here? Pretty convenient, but I thought it'd be a good time to take a little trip down memory lane and see what Trudeau had to say about public health and bodily autonomy when he was a little bit younger. This country is a country of openness, of respect, of compassion, of the rule of law, of the rights of the individuals, of freedom. Freedom from fear, freedom from crime, freedom to love who you want and not be judged for it. Freedom to do what you want with your body. This is a country of freedom. Freedom to do what you want with your body. Freedom to, you know, pursue your dreams. All right, now let's fast forward to December of 2021, last month. We. Oui. On va s'en sortir de cette pandémie par la vaccination. Puis on, sait, on en connaît tous des gens qui sont en train d'hésiter un petit peu. On va continuer d'essayer de les convaincre. Mais il y a aussi des gens qui sont farouchement opposés à la vaccination. Qui sont extrémistes. Qui ne croient pas dans la science, qui sont souvent misogynes, qui sont souvent racistes aussi. C'est un, 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 un petit groupe, mais qui prend de la place. Et là, il faut faire un choix en tant que leader, en tant que pays. Est-ce qu'on... 
Est-ce qu'on tolère ces gens-là ou est-ce qu'on dit, ben voyons, la plupart des gens, presque 80 des Québécois, ont fait ce qu'il fallait faire, se sont fait vacciner, on veut revenir à, 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 aux choses qu'on aime faire. Ce n'est pas ces gens-là qui vont nous bloquer maintenant. For those of you listening, that was in French. He was in Quebec, and he uh, the translations on the bottom. So if you can go back and watch it, that's easiest. Um, but basically, he said, "Look, those anti-vaxxers, they're misogynists, they're sexist, they're people who are just trying to muscle their way in. It's a small fringe group. And you know what we have to decide as Canadians, as Quebecians, we need to decide: do we tolerate these people? How crazy is that statement from the leader of Canada?" He's telling people, he's asking people and implying that we shouldn't tolerate one-fifth of the Quebec society, right? 80% of people are vaccinated. That means 20% aren't. Should we tolerate, should we tolerate one-fifth of the society? What an amazing, amazing thing to say. That's what he was saying a month ago. Now look at him. He's running. He's hiding from that small fringe. He never once confronted them. He never once debated the science. He didn't do any of that. And and what, where he's at right now? He's built, he made his bed. He made his bed and now he's lying in it. He needs to come out in front of this. He needs to talk with these people. This is this is what he deserves, honestly. And the only way to correct it is honesty and conversation. So come on, Justin. So this story continues to be really inspirational to me. Um, I'm really excited to support these truckers and I hope everyone here does too. And if you don't, that's fine. You don't have to support these people, but at least you know understand where they're coming from. And I think that's really important. Moving on to other news around the world. Uh, this comes from the BBC. COVID ministers plan to scrap the NHS jab requirement for England. So before I read the rest of this article, I just want to go out and say, guys, we called it here on this show first. On the January 10th episode, I played a video of a, a doctor in the NHS talking to Sajid Javid saying he didn't agree with this particular mandate of the jab for healthcare workers. And I'd said at the time that This, along with the CMS one in America, they were going to start coming down really quick um, just because the science and the pushback. And here we are a little over three, a little under three weeks later. And boom, the NHS has pulled back their requirement for the jab for healthcare workers in England. Let's read the article. Ministers plan to scrap a legal requirement for frontline NHS staff in England to be vaccinated against COVID, Health Secretary Sajid Javid has said. He told MPs ending the policy, which also affects social care staff, was now under consultation in light of the fast-spreading Omicron variant. The policy announced last year meant frontline NHS workers in England would have had to be fully vaccinated by the 1st of April, needing a first jab by this Thursday. This deadline is no longer applicable. Staff had faced redeployment or dismissal, prompting protests against the policy and some NHS workers considering moves to other UK nations. The health secretary defended the policy of initially introducing mandatory code vaccinations for NHS and social care workers, insisting the government makes no apology for it. But he told MPs ministers would now launch a consultation due to, quote, dramatic changes in the virus since the original policy was devised last year. He added, subject to the responses and the will of this house, the government will revoke the regulations. I have always been clear that our rules must remain proportionate and balanced. And of course, should we see another dramatic change in the virus, it would be only responsible to review this policy again. Meanwhile, there are no plans in Scotland and Wales to make COVID jabs mandatory for NHS workers or care home staff, while there will be a public consultation on the issue in Northern Ireland. Congrats, England. U.S., we're next. Now, here's a brief story from Reuters out of Japan. Japan's Kawa says ivermectin showed antiviral effect against Omicron. Japanese trading and pharmaceutical companies Kawa on Monday said that antiparasite drug ivermectin showed an antiviral effect against Omicron and other coronavirus variants in joint non-clinical research. The company, which has been working with Tokyo's Kitasato University um, on testing the drug as a potential treatment for COVID-19, did not provide further details. In guidance on its website dated September 2021, the FDA noted growing interest in the drug for preventing or treating COVID-19 in humans, but said it had received multiple reports of patients who had required medical attention, including hospitalization, after self-medicating with it. The use of ivermectin to treat COVID-19 is currently being investigated in a UK trial run by the University of Oxford. The researchers said on Monday that it was still underway and they did not want to co comment further until they have results to report. We also showed that Duke over in Research Triangle was performing another experiment a uh, big experiment on whether ivermectin was working on COVID or not. In more big corona news, the FDA had a news release on January 31st, 2022. The coronavirus update. FDA takes key action by approving the second COVID-19 vaccine. 
The article continues, Today, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved a second COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine has been known as the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. The approved vaccine will be marketed as Spikevax for the prevention of COVID-19 in individuals 18 years of age and older. Some key points. Spikevax meets the FDA's rigorous standards for safety, effectiveness, and manufacturing quality required for approval. Moderna COVID-19 vaccine has been available under Emergency Use Authorization, EUA, for individuals 18 years of age and older since December 18, 2020. So this is important to note, Spikevax has the same formulation as the EUA Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and is administered as a primary series of two doses one month apart. In this light, Spikevax can be used interchangeably with the EUA uh, Moderna COVID-19 vaccine to provide the COVID-19 vaccination series. In terms of side effects, the paragraph reads this, the most commonly reported side effects by clinical trial participations were pain, redness and swelling of the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle or joint pain, chills, nausea, vomiting, swollen lymph nodes under the arm, and fever. Additionally, the FDA conducted a rigorous evaluation of the post-authorization safety surveillance data pertaining to myocarditis, which is inflammation of the heart muscle, and pericarditis, inflammation of the tissues surrounding the heart, following vaccination with the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and has determined that the data demonstrate increased risk, particularly within seven days following the second dose with the observed risk highest in males 18 through 24 years of age. Available data from short-term follow-up suggests that most individuals have had resolution of symptoms. However, some individuals required intensive care support. Information is not yet available about potential long-term health outcomes. But just so we all feel better about this, the FDA conducted its own benefit risk assessment using modeling to predict how many symptomatic COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, intensive care unit admissions, and deaths from COVID-19 the vaccine in individuals 18 years of age and older would prevent versus the number of potential myocarditis, pericarditis cases, hospitalizations, ICU admissions, and deaths that might be associated with the vaccine. The FDA has determined that the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the risk of myocarditis and pericarditis in individuals 18 years of age and older. The FDA is requiring the company to conduct post-marketing studies to further assess the risk of myocarditis and pericarditis following vaccination with spike vax. Does this mean we'll be seeing spike vax anytime soon? Maybe not. So this comes from the Virginia Star. We haven't seen yet Comirnaty, which is the Pfizer-approved vaccine, in the U.S. yet. And this was on December 23, 2021. Uh, New York-based Pfizer has sold and shipped hundreds of millions of doses of its FDA-approved COVID-19 vaccine, Comirnaty, to the European Union, despite saying last week that it had not been shipped in the U.S. This was the end of December last year. And according to the FDA's official website, the products are legally distinct, that the products being the EUA version of Pfizer's uh, vaccine versus Comirnaty. They're legally distinct with certain differences that do not impact safety or effectiveness. I'm not entirely sure what those differences are, and I'm not entirely sure how they do or don't impact safety or effectiveness, but that's very different than spike vax, which is literally, it seems like, the EUA version of Moderna's vaccine. The speed of these approvals is not going to be looked upon fondly by history. That's just my opinion. Moving on to a pretty incredible video on CNN about Joe Rogan. Let's watch. What about this, I guess, sort of apology from Joe Rogan? Do you think he was put up to it? Do you think he's remorseful? What, is, what does it tell you? Uh, I think it tells us that Spotify is under immense pressure right now uh, to do something. They have to quell uh, this controversy. And so, you know, whether Rogan comes out and, and apologizes, maybe that helps a little bit. Uh, but you saw in that video, he's saying he still really is interested in having these people with these contrarian takes, these, uh, frankly, anti-vaccine takes on his program and that he will mm -hmm. maybe balance them out with some uh, authoritative voices who are reflecting the public health consensus. And of course, that creates this false equivalence, right? You know, if you, you, having someone on who's spouting anti-vaccine rhetoric and then having someone on who's reflecting the uh, public health viewpoint, uh, those, those things are not equal and in, in, in presenting them like that certainly suggests that they might be. And yet Joe Rogan has the number one podcast on Spotify. Millions of people listen to him. Audiences are choosing him. Why? What is it about him? Clearly he connects. Yeah, I think it's maybe that it's, it's an unscripted conversation. He does have these people on who um, are not really uh, given platforms uh, in major media institutions. And that's because they are, you know, have, spouting all these sort of anti-vaccine rhetoric. 
uh, things that, that, that are not in line with the public health consensus. Uh, look at CNN. We have a health desk. We uh, make sure that the information that we provide viewers is, is accurate. Most ma major outlets uh, have some sort of system in place to do that. Joe Rogan's having a conversation with people that, uh, you know, he finds interesting and they might attract eyeballs or, or I guess, ears, <laughs> but uh, they, they are not reflecting the public health consensus. And I think that's really what's uh, unnerved a lot of people over the past few weeks. Oliver Darcy, thank you very much. Still to come, they are the only group still not eligible. They just don't get it. I don't understand how they don't get it, but they really don't get it. So first of all, when he speaks about false equivalency, how exactly is it a false equivalency? So you get you, Peter McCullough or Dr. Robert Malone. These guys come up there. They present all this data and they, they list their sources. You can go read their papers. These are very well-studied men in their particular fields. Malone on mRNA vaccination and mRNA technology. Peter McCullough, one of the most celebrated cardiologists in the, in the world. And they come up, they present their data. And some of the things they talk about are in line with some public health things. Others aren't. And they're upset that they're presenting data. Why doesn't CNN also present data? Why don't they also cite their sources? Why don't they also have good conversations with a whole host of people to get to the best decision? They don't, and that's why people don't like them. Second note, on the health desk, he said CNN has a health desk. That's they present accurate information. How accurate have they been? Really, how accurate have they been in the last two years on COVID? They've been all over the place. So it's just, they don't, they really can't, they, they need a mirror. And even if they had a mirror, I still don't know if they would see why people love Joe Rogan. We need to defend Joe Rogan. If Joe Rogan falls, everybody that has a dissenting opinion falls with him. If they can take out that guy, they can take out any one of us. And it's not, be, it's not that we're dissenting for dissent's sake. We're looking at data. We're trying to understand the world. And, and we're presenting our view of it. And that needs to be hotly contested on all sides. It cannot be this one-sided myopic view that CNN and MSNBC and a lot of times Fox and all these other places have. So that's the rub. That's the rub, you guys. And if Joe Rogan gets taken down, we all get taken down. Real quick, we're going to cover this story before we end here, and it's that John Hopkins released a literature review and meta-analysis on the effects of lockdowns on COVID-19 mortality. This is huge. It just dropped. I'm going to go over the, some brief notes. I might dive into it again later this week. But briefly, here's from the abstract. While this meta-analysis concludes that lockdowns have had little to no public health effects, they have imposed enormous economic and social costs where they have been adopted in consequence. Lockdown policies are ill-founded and should be rejected as a pandemic policy instrument. Yowza, that hurts. So here's your brief conclusion on MPIs. An MPI is a non-pharmaceutical intervention. Because of the heterogeneity in MPIs across studies, it is difficult to draw strong conclusions based on the studies of multiple specific measures. We find no evidence that lockdowns, school closures, border closures, and limiting, limiting gatherings have had a noticeable effect on COVID-19 mortality. There is some evidence that business closures reduce COVID-19 mortality, but the variation in estimates is large and the effect seems related to closing bars. There may be an effect of mask mandates, but just two studies look at this, one of which one only looks at the effect of employee mask mandates. So very broadly speaking, little to no effect. Here are the final paragraphs of the conclusion. Overall, our meta-analysis fails to confirm that lockdowns have had a large, significant effect on mortality rates. Studies examining the relationship between lockdowns, strictness based on the OXCGRT stringent index, find that the average lockdown in Europe and the United States only reduced COVID-19 mortality by 0.2%, compared to a COVID-19 policy based solely on recommendations. Shelter-in-place orders, SIPOs, were also ineffective. They only reduced COVID-19 mortality by 2.9%. Studies looking at specific NPIs, uh, all the things we discussed, also found no broad-based evidence of noticeable effects on COVID-19 mortality. However, closing non-essential businesses seem to have had some effect, reducing COVID-19 mortality by 10.6%, which is likely to be related to the closure of bars. Also, mask mandates or masks may reduce COVID-19 mortality, but there is only one study that examines universal mask mandates. The effect of border closures, school closures, and limited gatherings on COVID-19 mortality yields precision-weighted estimates of 0.1%, 4.4%, and 1.6% respectively. Lockdowns also do not reduce COVID-19 mortality. You can find the full study in the PDF in the description below. Please read it. It's kind of long, 64 pages, or 62 pages, sorry. So it's a bit of a read, really interesting, and I hope you guys enjoy it. With that, we'll continue to follow the science all week and every week like we've done since we've started. And uh, please enjoy this video. I'll see you guys again on Thursday. I just came here to show my support to these truckers that are stuck here. Okay, go for it. Um, 
I'll just sing like one verse because my hands are gonna be so I full. Know, no pressure, no pressure. Amazing grace, how sweet is the sound that saves a wretch like me. Was blind, but now I see. 